Hello and welcome to the Market Review, where we bring you key developments in the financial and capital market as it affects the economy. Today, we'll be looking at the rising inflation, monetary policy, and the capital markets. And my guest today is Mr. Temitopo Emoshiri, an investment strategy analyst with AfriInvest. Nice to have you on the program. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. And to our viewers, before we begin this conversation, let's give you a wrap of key market stories uh, from last week. The Securities and Exchange Commission issued guidelines for the operation of cryptocurrency and other classified digital assets in Nigeria. And also last week, Dangote Cement completed the issuance of a 116 billion naira Series 2 fixed rate senior unsecured bond under its 300 billion naira multi instrument issuance program. Those were some of the key stories from last week as it concerns the capital market. And let us get on to the conversation for today. And if you're joining us, it's the Market Review. And my guest today is Mr. Temito Pomoshi, an investment strategy analyst with AfriInvest. And we'll be discussing rising inflation, monetary policy, and the capital markets. So, Mr. Temito Pomoshi, there's a trend, of course, a trend of rising inflation, busting like a demon, and really affecting global economy and markets, including Nigeria. For April, the inflation rate in US is currently 8.3% after it hit its highest in 40 years to 8.5% in March. In UK, it hit its uh, over 40 years high, which is uh, 9%. And Nigeria has risen to 16.82%. Just our neighbors, Ghana, have their inflation rate at 19.4%, the highest in 10 years. Now, with this rising inflation tide that is also affecting Nigeria, Today is a very big day for the country. Our Central Bank of Nigeria will be holding its multi policy committee meeting for May 2022. What are the implications of this inflation tide uh, for this meeting? The MPC meeting, like you said, will be meeting today. And, um, you know, they will have to assess a number of factors that will underpin, you know, their decision regarding monetary policy rates. And um, they will have to look at the global economy. And the domestic economy. So, of of essence, is um, the condition of global economy, particularly inflation, which you have mentioned, and how you know it has continued to create uncertainty around you know uh, um, the world and across economy. It's actually very uh, it's a very tough time you know for monetary policy authority at this time because factors that are driving inflation are actually outside you know most of it are outside the purview. Of monetary policy tools. For instance, you talk about the um, impasse between Russia and Ukraine, the war, you know, in Ukraine that is stoking, you know, uh, commodity prices. You know, prior to 2022, um, I, I, I knew that inflation will become a problem, right, because of the support that the economy got from both fiscal and monetary policy authority. But mm -hmm. nobody saw that it would get to this extent, right? And the, the prediction was just on the back of uh, the relationship between the support the economy got vis-a-vis -vis output gap. That is the negative output gap created by the pandemic. In yeah. the, for instance, in the US, it was estimated that the negative output gap created by the pandemic was about 600 to $1 trillion. But the economy got over $3 trillion in form of both fiscal and monetary policy support. And you know, Menti Friedman is always right that inflation is too much money chasing few goods. So because people didn't spend in 2020, as a result of uncertainty, they were, you know, people were apprehensive. So money was held for a precautionary motive. People were just saving and precaution because they didn't know the outlook. But vaccination came. Economic recovery in 2021, you know, led to significant spending. You will see that the, across commodities, asset class, prices went up. Not because investors were able to do, uh, you know, detailed analysis of some of those things they invested their money, but because they had liquidity. And you can see what is even happening in the US, even in terms of labor market, is yeah. extremely strong now mm -hmm. on the back of what? significant demand. So all of these, the CBN will have to look at them. I mean, the Monetary Policy Authority will assess all this factor. And now that the Fed is even uncertain as to the outlook for, of inflation, you know, all of these things to be considered because as the war in Russia and Ukraine is taking a toll on commodity prices 
affecting even oil prices and a number of, you know, that, that, it, this is concerned. It's not even limited to just Russia and Ukraine. You know, recently, Sweden and, um, and um, Finland are also looking at joining NATO. So the risks are still on the horizon, which means, you know, they have to look at all that uncertainties, you know, that are currently affecting the global economy. And again, you know, um, uh, the U.S. Fed has increased policy rates by, you know, by uh, 50 bps at the last meeting, and yeah. the first meeting this year increased by 25 bps. So the range is between 0.75 and 1 percent now. So the CPN will begin to watch this, and the Monetary Policy Authority will need to assess this because it's actually very important. In fact, at the last MPC meeting, you know, the, 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 the members actually assessed by economy, and they were already saying that IMF will review out, out, um, outlook lower. And you know, when the report came in, partly for economic growth, global economic growth was reviewed, you know, by about 0.8%. And even inflation, you know, outlook was also reviewed upward. So all of those, you know, uh, the Monetary Policy Authority would have to begin to look at, you know, those factors, the assessing and how that, you know, uh, uh, come down into domestic, you know, policy. In fact, you know, that even underpins the bias towards a rate hike, you know, um, at the next meeting. And when you come to the domestic economy as well, you could look at, um, you know, broadly the two categories of a domestic economy, the real sector and the financial sector, or the real sector and the monetary sector. So you look at the real sector, you know, we're, we're quite upbeat when we saw the Q4 number, you know, that um, economy went up by 4% in Q4, on, uh, so which made, um, uh, which um, actually aggregated growth to about 3.4%. But now it seems what is currently happening globally in terms of you know inflation and even shocks to you know commodity prices will take a toll on on Nigeria's GDP in Q1. Particularly if you go by by um, the PMI, you know a number of leading indicators. We don't have those numbers anymore, but you know, as reported by even the um, 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 MPC at last meeting, uh, you know PMI went down to about 50.1 from about 51.4. So, and you know, the closer it is to 50, it shows that the economy is likely to slow down. So if we had only seen the figure for February and inflation at in February, when, when MPC had, you know, their first meeting this year, inflation was just 15.7%. Now we're looking at inflation at 16.8%. Shows that economy activity may have also been negatively impaired. So they will look at all of to, you know, to actually assess the domestic economy before making the, you know, the policy decision. And importantly, importantly, their core objective is price stability. So we have to assess factors that are currently driving inflation. It's actually very scary. For instance, if you look at the recent inflation number, it went up by, uh, by 16.82% year on year. And if you look at month on month numbers, 1.76%, that is extremely significant. How do you know that you know, inflation is a big concern? For instance, whenever you see month on month above 1%, because you know when if inflation increase, increases by 1% 1, 1 month on month, if you analyze it, that means it, it's going to amount to 12% per annum. So whenever you see figures above 1%, it shows that there's a major problem. For instance, average month on month inflation for this year is 1.6%. Last year, 1.22%. So it actually actually tells you that inflation will continue to stay higher this year. Why? Because you already have a very, uh, you know, the base effect will continue to take a toll on prices going forward, even outside the macro conditions. You know, a monetary policy authority will look at this as well, because at the last meeting, they were quite optimistic that prices will moderate. <laughs> well, well that's, a, that's a different scenario now. So yes, yes, exactly. The situation is quite different now because when the meeting was said we did, we could not assess the extent of how Russia Ukraine crisis, the impact of imported food inflation would affect, you know, would affect general inflation number, particularly the headline inflation. In fact, I even noted in the meeting in the in the communique that they they were all big that um, you know food inflation would decelerate because it decelerated for three uh, for uh, since December and all that. But it went to us as 18%. In fact, that's the highest. Food inflation is currently at the highest since 20, um, you know, uh, okay, imported food inflation to be precise. Imported food inflation is now at the highest since 2017, when exchange rate went to about 490. 
you know, it, that was when we had significant jump in exchange rate the first quarter of 2017. So imported food inflation is contributing significantly, you know, to, to, to the headline inflation. So they, they will look at all of these, um, you know, all of these um, um, and indicators, inflation, GDP, what is happening externally, and what is even happening to other, you know, emerging market and developing countries. Ghana, you know, interest rate is already, you know, um, uh, rising in Ghana as a result of increase in policy rate. We see what is happening in Africa and a number of other countries. So they are responding, you know, very fast. In fact, Russia, in a bid to just, you know, sustain currency, you know, in, in, in interest rate was increased immediately when there was sanction on the country, when the currency plummeted. But come to look at um, uh, Russia currencies today is even way, way, way stable than what we have in Nigeria. So all of this plus will be assessed before, you know, before the MPC will take a stance. So, so uh, to point, I mean, you just made a comment now that even the rubble, the rubble is more stable than the night. That's a very, very uh, tough one. But uh, what posture do you expect to be uh, displayed in the big decision today? Because um, you've seen the Fed, like you rightly said, raise interest rate. You've seen the Bank of England raise. Um, are we going to see a hawkish or dovish approach uh, today? considering all the factors that we highlighted? Like I said, you know, going by the prevailing macro condition, it's expected that MPC, you know, raises MPR, the rates, right? Mm -hmm. Although we know that, you know, there could be changes, but it's expected given the prevailing macro condition. For instance, even at the last MPC meeting, despite the fact that, you know, the communicate touched at the fact that they would not want to increase interest rate because of the fact that um, um, uh, the MPC was not comfortable with growth, the level of growth, uh, you know, but about four members still voted for a rate hike. In fact, one of the members actually voted for 50 bips hike in, you know, MPR. So, and if you look at then to now, the meeting was held in March, right? Mm -hmm. Inflation was just 15.7%. Now we are looking at 16.8%. And if you look at month on month uh, increase in inflation, 1.5%, now 1.76% in terms of month on month, which tells you that a significant price pressure. And if you also look at foreign reserves, it has continued to decline. When the meeting was held, you know, in March, there was a little accretion to foreign reserves. But you know, we've been complaining about the fact that Nigeria is not getting enough inflows from oil, you know, oil revenue as a result of different factors that have been, you know, uh, largely emphasized from oil tech, technical issues, you know, and the fact that, you know, investors are not looking at oil due to the ESG drive, sustainability drive. So new investments are not coming into that space. So all of these factors, you know, are deteriorated. So this actually, you know, points to the fact that the policy rate uh, you know, has to be increased. And again, you know, when you talk about inflation, three factors are the major driver, money supply, exchange rates, and structural factors. So from money supply, in fact, I could tell you broadly that when you look at M2, but I did it, an analysis some back, if you check M2, the growth in M2 is about 12%. And real GDP, that's the uh, uh, long-term growth rate, is about uh, 12%, right? Why economic growth? GDP in the last 10 years only grown by about 2.6 percent. That actually confirms, you know, Mr. Friedman's theory. You have so much money, naira chasing, you know, few economic activities. And on the flip side, if you look at what is happening in the real sector, economic activity in terms of productivity, manufacturers are not producing due to constraints, right? So if they are not producing, when you have, if, even with government stimulus to drive demand, if mm -hmm. supply is not meeting demand. Domestic supply is not meeting demand. What will people do? People will import to meet their demand because consumers will always find a way to satisfy their needs. Once they are importing, what will happen? There will be pressure on exchange rates and inflation, imported food inflation will go up. You know, exchange will also deteriorate. So, you know, that tells you why, you know, money supply has to be carefully managed. And exchange factor, you know, I pointed to the fact that Imported food inflation is now at the highest level since 2017, when exchanges skyrocketed to 490, you know? So, which means, you know, you have to, 
in a way tightened to ensure that you know we address the uh, uh, the, the imported food inflation concern through the the past through effect of exchange rates you know and again nigeria is not the only game in town we are not the only the only game in town, if Ghana is increasing interest rates, South Africa is doing the same thing, not just to drive foreign direct investment or so. You, all, you need to do that so as to align with what is happening globally. A, a bit to tell investors that the monetary policy authority is responding to economy reality. You know, if inflation is rising and the authority is oblivious to that fact, we are not talking about it. It shows that it seems if this goal was the policy authority may not respond. So it has a signaling effect to even foreign investors to say that yes, in this country is actually serious to rein in inflation, which is why Fed, the US Fed is not using interest rates to only curtail inflation, to also guide inflation expectation and integrity that the authority is committed to, you know, their core objective, which is price stability. So looking at all of these factors, it's quite clear that the you know monetary policy authority uh, you know has to go um, you know uh, hawkish or you know tighten monetary policy so as to address all of these um, you know concerns and lastly I should even talk about the what we call the interest rate parity you know if interest rate is going up in advanced economies you know interest rate parity will help you to determine effective exchange rates right if interest rate is going up in advanced economies. And you are not, so it has already created what we call credit spread. That is, you know, premium in the US in advanced economies that have increased interest rate above your country. So, which means there's now a better spread to yeah. invest in those countries. Even though we are complaining that there's, we don't have much of the foreign portfolio investment again, the ones that should come will not come because there's already a better spread, you know, because all these countries are increasing interest rate. And when it comes to even countries' risk premium, you know, these countries are also increasing interest rates. It's making those countries competitive. And uh, again, I think it's also very important for me to explain the importance of, you know, purchasing power parity. Just look at the U.S. Inflation on a month-on-month basis went up by 0.3% in the U.S., but Nigeria 1.7%, which means, you know, there has to be a form of adjustment through interest rates so as to ensure that, you know, there's a level of equilibrium in a bit to, you know, to make the country competitive attract investors, even though they are still on the sideline because they are looking at the political you know, atmosphere of the country. Interest rate alone will not attract foreign investors, but the signaling effect is Hello. of the essence going forward. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, the signaling effect is of the essence, so we should not be surprised if we see maybe 50 business points uh, hike uh, in, in that regard, just like you rightly said, we should expect uh, technically a hike, just as a signaling effect. But let's get to your territory. What will be the implications for the equities and fixed income market if this hike happens? All right, so I'll start with the fixed income market, particularly the money market. The first um, evidence or the first um, point out of call for monetary policy, you know, um, 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 transmission mechanism is the money market, right? Once there's increase in NPR, immediately it will affect the money market. For instance, if you check the asymmetric corridor, you know, it, it speaks to the standing lending facility rate and standing, um, you know, lending deposit rate. That is the rate at which uh, commercial banks borrow and lend, you know, to uh, the, uh, lend to the central bank. So automatically that will affect, you know, the commercial banks. And you know, the commercial banks or banks generally are linked to the producer of the economy. And again, you know that savings rate is 10% of NPR. So automatically, savings rate will be affected, right? Savings rates will move up. And once savings rate is up, it will affect the cost of, you know, uh, cost of fund to banks. Then we expect that once that happens, it will take it, you know, on interest rate, more, it will take it all on interest rate, lending rates, um, you know, lending rates basically, right? And also the impact on on the money market, the, or the overnight rate, the repurchase rate, and the open buyback. Before we begin, we now see the impact on treasury bill, homo, and lastly, we now extend to the bond market. Because if, you know, if cost of credit is going up, you know, it's affecting banks and all that, in a way, it will also affect, interestingly, it will affect the insurances of, you know, commercial paper, because they are short-term instruments. 
investors will want to get more reward because interest rate is up. And I think it's also very important for me to highlight that, um, you know, interest rate response, market interest rate response to monetary policy when there's increase is higher than when, uh, when, when, when it's reduced. That is, you know, economists talk about the fact that prices rates are flexible upward and sticky downward, which is why whenever monetary policy authority reduces rates to stimulate the risk sector, it does not happen. We will see that banks will not necessarily reduce rates. But whenever they hear the needs of increasing rates, not even the actual, when there's a news going around that interest will be increased, automatically they increase, you know, they respond immediately. So, which means, you know, if there's even a 50 bips increase in MPR, it will definitely affect you know, the fixed income market. And to the equities market, yes, in the short term, it may not really affect so much because you see that currently the market is up by 23, uh, 23% year to date, the stock market, the NGS or shell index. Despite the, you know, the, the, the current macroeconomic condition that is a bit challenging from inflation to exchange, it will be, you wonder why such is happening, which means you know, are actually trading in isolation of the macro condition. And what is driving the market? For instance, the top gainers for the sector that's currently driving the, um, um, the stock market is the oil sector. And it's on the back of the rally international oil market, right? And again, if you look at consumer goods sector, because of what we are seeing in Indonesia, there's man with the importation, you know, export of palm oil. It's driving the price of Okomo oil, Presco. So these are outside of, you know, Nigeria macro condition. I also see MTN, you know, and in fact, wheat, you know, there's man with the importation of wheat from India just recently. And, you know, what is also affecting Russia, the current crisis between Russia and Ukraine, it's also affecting commodity prices. So what I'm seeing, in essence, the market in short run or let's just short term, you know, impact may not respond to uh, the PR, but in medium to, you know, in the medium to long term, it will definitely respond because once there's increase in interest rates and it has dovetailed into lending rates, Top institutions, you know, blue chip companies on the exchange would want to raise, you know, they want to raise funding, debt funding. And once they are, uh, you know, doing that, they will do it at higher cost. It will take a toll on, on their, on their, you know, uh, interest expense. And once your interest expense goes up, it will affect profitability. Once profitability is affected, it will dovetail into, you know, invest, investors' view of the company on the Nigerian stock exchange. And that would affect prices negatively, only happen in the medium to long term. But in the short run, there may be a major impact. And lastly, if you look at the structure of the market right now, it's, it's largely dominated by, you know, retail investors. Retail yeah. investors are not as sophisticated as, you know, as, um, you know the, host, uh, the institutional investors. And again, if you look at what is happening, Globally, for instance, the US market is leading significantly. In fact, just yesterday, NASDAQ was down by over 4%. So, mm-hmm. because in, a lot of people that love foreign stocks, so I think all of those factors will continue to drive you know, the equities market in the, in the short term. But you know, over a period of time, the reality of higher cost of lending will affect you know, profitability. And that could take into performance and maybe bring down the beautiful return of the NGS or shell index of 23% that we have seen so far this year. Okay. Uh, in just a minute, uh, Mr. Dentope, we're in the pre election year, and you mentioned something about money supply hitting 12%. Now, in periods of pre election year, there's a lot of spending. And uh, of course, most people want to manage that and take a decision. So, what do you, what is what do you see as the remaining part of the year in terms of the approach of the Central Bank of Nigeria monetary policy in managing uh, from the monetary policy side of the economy? So, I, I would like to say that you know when an event or if an event is predictable, it should be a problem, you know, to the economy. For instance, their data though have not been able to validate this assumption or postulation that, you know, money supply usually increased, you know, pre-election years. It has not been validated with data. I think it's more of the sentiment, right? Because if the CBN knows that, yes, data speaks to the fact that election year, you always see jump in money supply. It's just for the money policy authority to tighten or to tighten monetary policy. So I have to ensure that there won't be, you know, 
significant pressure on, on inflation, right? So I don't see much of the pressure coming from Naira, you know, supply or money supply, but more of the pressure on the back of, you know, expectation, uncertainty about the outcome of in terms of our current account balance, domestic sector purchasing power, and you know employment condition, the labor market. So all of those will be considered rather than just looking at money supply. Because if it's predictable, the uh, CPM would definitely manage it adequately. Okay, okay, all right then. No cause for alarm. Uh, Pre-election period, a lot of things are happening, but we'll be watching it. But thank you very much, Mr. Temto Promotion. I mean, so much to learn uh, from what will happen today from the MPC. Likely we expect that there'll be interest rate hike, but most importantly, uh, the implications on the capital markets, the whole ecosystem, short term won't be really fair, but medium to long term, the impact will be there. So we're monitoring all those uh, situations. But thank you once again, Dr. Moshri, uh, investment uh, analyst with AfriInvest. Thank you uh, for the time and wish you all the best in your yeah. endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And that'll be all for this edition of the Market Review Show. If you have questions or comments around the rising tide of inflation and monetary policy, and of course, the capital markets, you can send your views, comments, or suggestions, or even questions to otobasitabasekong.co. To all our viewers today, uh, just to inform you that, um, yes, you can go to our website, proche.co, to read our latest news articles, stories and reports on the capital market. Subscribe and you get all the best from the entire market ecosystem, from the fixed income, equities, commodities, to even the unlisted uh, OTC market. You can also engage us via social media platform displayed on the screen. And this to inform our viewers that from 2 p.m. today, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Gomi Menfele, will announce the key decisions from the Monetary Policy Committee meeting. You can follow the excerpts of that development for, on our social media handles that we earlier mentioned that is played on the screen. Don't forget that you need to be informed to make the right investment decisions. Thank you for watching and keep discussing the financial and capital markets because they create wealth and economic opportunities.